Yes, you know, some have even linked Miguel Gamondi to the Chief Jersey. Obviously, he's just won the league with the Yeah, no, I, I, I said it here when, yeah. when, when they played Sundowns in the first league. I said, that's the best coach for Chiefs, I think. Yeah. You know, somebody who knows South Africa has played, um, I mean, has coached two teams in South Africa, has mm. coached continental football, mm. has taken a team at the pressure level of where Kaiser Chiefs is in Tanzania. And if you've ever been to Tanzania and watched a game there, you'll know that our fans are nothing compared, compared to what to happens you. in those stadiums. Yeah, yeah. I think Mr. Gamondi, alongside with his star player, yeah. those would be... Aziz Key. Aziz Key, those would be Chiefs' best signings, I think. Yeah. Exactly, nine after the hour six on the mighty Metro FM. It's Sports Not Amplified with Andy Le. And I am Andy Le Ngu with a touchdown. They're back again tomorrow between three and six. That is Tebow Touch as well as Loot Love, the best duo on the airwaves. Listen, when they started, I was like, hmm, is it Lerato and Proverb or is it Touch and Loot? I don't know. What I do know is the abundance of talent at Metro FM is unbelievable. Uh, but I go 10 after the hour, 6 on the mighty Metro FM. Listen, uh, Mazola, mm. Super Geno, is going to tell us about Tebo Is he leaving Sundowns? Yo. What about Ronan Williams? Will he be staying? And what does Sundowns look like without Ronan and Tebo So, we'll get into that. I mean, this is a player who's played less games than most, but is still regarded as one of the best this season in Tebo Homukwena. Ronan Williams, a front runner for player of the season. Can Sundowns do without those two? What is the state of their contracts? Mm. Mazala Malefe is here to tell us that. I'm excited for it. And I need you to start sending those voice notes now. If you want to ask a question of any particular incident from the weekend to the referee, it's pretty simple. 060-552-7303. Ask the principal. Okay? That's all you need to say. Say hashtag ask the principal and go for your question. If you want to ask Mazola, it's the same thing. Hashtag ask Mazola and go for it on 060-552-7303. Then I need to clarify something else. You know, because, guys, there's never been refereeing decisions gone haywire like there's been this season. Mm. It's been the absolute worst. Despite what they're saying at Safa, it has been the worst season for decisions in the history of the DSTV Premiership to me. That's how I feel having watched those decisions. This week alone, I mean, you've got to go back to midweek games. That's how bad things were. And if you're going to take all those incidents, you're going to end up with 15, 20, maybe even 30 different incidents that people want to take a look at. Was it a goal? Uh, did Mendieta play, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Shalulile uh, offside because he interfered with plate. Should Mabasa have gotten a red card? What does this mean for Dove Edmondson's uh, rest of the season? There's so many questions to be asked. There is no ways. There is no feasible possible way Wahana. that we can get all of them done. No. So we split them between here and soccer zone. If you don't get what you want, I'm sorry. It's Monday. It's the weekend that was. Hashtag the weekend that was on uh, Sports that Amplified with Andy Le. And you know what it means. It means the guys are here. The principal, Victor Tlungwane, former suffer and kept referee as alongside the best journalist when it comes to all things football in South Africa at Super Journal. It's Mondays. The three wise men are here. The three wise men but not always so wise on Sports Night Amplified with MDLA on Metro FM. Hey, listen. We're wise, but we're not always so wise. Very quickly, uh, snip it into what you're going to be talking about, uh, the Vic. Uh, today, we want to tell the viewers or educate our viewers that there's a player at Here Kaiser Chiefs. Here they are, Chiefs. listeners. Yeah, listeners. <laughs> yeah. There's a player at, at Kaiser Chiefs who received a red card. Uh, whether I will feature again uh, during this season or not, we'll unpack it. Yeah. Ah, what, one more game to go? Yeah. Uh, Is he going ah. to play or not? Ah, so we've got a Sundowns matter, we've got a Chiefs matter, we've got a Pirates matter. Exactly. Okay, cool. Mazola? Mm. Uh, as you mentioned, Tebu Mokwena, Ronwen Williams, we you know broke that story last week regarding Tebza. Uh, Ronwen won goalkeeper of, of the season that at the inaugural uh, Kosafa Awards and we spoke to him there about his chances of ever playing abroad. And uh, Victor Gomez gives an update on VAR. Well, that's what you can look forward to as far as the contributions of Mazola as well as da Vic, the principal. But firstly, let's go to matters from the weekend. Starting off in tennis news, Rafael Nadal, after his defeat in Rome, it surely is, for tennis at least, the end of an era. Today was not a good match for me. <laughs> I mean, I didn't play the way that I... I I really think I I can play and I need to play. 
of course, the improvement is uh, it's important because I <laughs> the, the, the biggest improvement is that I still playing. You know, I have Roland Garros in in just uh, two weeks and a half, uh, so arrive a moment that I need to prove myself if I am able to 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 push my body the limit that I need to to push to. Is age finally catching up with some of our favorites and uh, taking away something we've enjoyed for so many years? Both Djokovic and Rafael Nadal knocked out in Rome. Let's move on now to the Premier League. Vincent Company relegated, meaning uh, that Lal Foster, the only player who is South African and was playing in the Premier League, has been relegated. He will no longer be playing in top flight football unless he's snatched up by someone else. Looking at uh, the injuries that he's had, I'm not talking about just physical injuries, but also mental injuries, one wonders if he will be scooped up by anyone. But here's Vincent Company on the relegation. It's disappointing today and it's frustrating because of so many great performances out there and because we we, we did feel like we were getting there, you know, in terms of how we, how we were able to to, to line up against these teams um, but at the same time no soaking no moaning tomorrow is um, the first day of what what needs to only be exciting so right now disappointment and and, and we'll go home and it won't change I d- and I understand most of the Africans didn't feel sorry uh, there was no empathy for Lao for Foster life. I think it had a lot to do with, with the AFCON, with the AFCON you know a lot of people saying had you come we would be there with Bar-Kikama. you come no, but if not, really, <laughs> had you come. Ah, I, South Africans, I call, come on, Zanagai. Okay. Ah, hey, not, not Kamabilia. Oh, okay. Ka- <laughs> karma. Karma. Okay. Not karma, Grau. Pilia to Zanagai, no. Let's move on to the DSCB Premiership. These are the goals from the Amazulu versus Chiefs match. It's the best of the SABC. Mr. you gotta love it that is the amazing talent of sabc sport across different radio stations giving you the games in the language of your choice. Dan Malasela, he's looking at promotion. That was his mandate given to by Barroca to say, hey, we've built you this beautiful place. He came onto the show and said, Andile, this is what they want of me. Mm. This is what I must do. There's one more game to go in the Mutsipa Foundation Championship. And guess what? He could still do it. So could JDR. So could Tux. Four teams all vying for that promotion playoff spot. And all of them could do it. And they're all playing each other with one game to go. Have a listen to Dan Malasela on promotion playoffs at Mutsipa Championship. Nature says we, we must all go to the last match, you know, because I heard that the, the other matches were drawn as well. So maybe nature says let the last game be interesting as well. Let's see. You know, let's see what, what we do with that. It's going to be very tough, you know, um, uh, more so that we are traveling. They are not, you know, so. Uh, but we know how to manage this place, you know. We know how to manage the travel. What will be required from us will be the discipline on the day, discipline of the match. How disciplined are we? Listen, there's going to be no cheating, no exchange of money, nothing, because the four teams playing each other all stand a chance of qualifying. Whoever wins out of those four teams qualifies. It's going to be Barroca who are playing tax. Both of them looking at qualification. JDR plays Maritzbeck. Both of them looking forward we need to those qualification. Games on TV. I agree. Those games should be on the SABC, the people's choice. That's where they should be. But hey, uh, we'll have to see about that. Let's move on now. I've got another minute or so before I hand over to Mazola and Tavik. Vusmuzi uh, Vilagazi saying he knew the strength of Orlando Pirates and that's how he was able to beat them. We knew their strength uh, and we tried uh, to plan accordingly. Uh, obviously, uh, some players, I think yesterday we, we video session, 
others were confused as to our coach why do we have to defend the uh, let's go uh, and defend on position one but knowing the strong point of Orlando Pirates we wanted to keep our st- uh, defensive structure very strong and you got to be uh, proud of the young man, Busumuzi Vilagazi, there, beating Orlando Pirates. And this is uh, the reaction of coach Jose Riviero on the defeat to Riches Bay. If, if you see the way we start the game, I think we were, we were there. We were, on, we were on task. But today we didn't find early the, the net, like in the recent games, and that complicated a little bit more. It's true that maybe we look a little bit in a rush in, in the last meters, in, in many in many situations, but because we know that we have to win every remaining game, and uh, but still we have uh, two more games to go in the league, and I think, like I said, one week ago, I think it's going to be decided in the in the last game of the season. Listen, there might not be excitement as far as relegation is concerned because a team that is relegated confirmed over the weekend yeah. and it is Cape Town Spurs. They are gone. They are out of here. We spoke to the coach and uh, I asked him if he's going to go down with them, Ernst Middendorp, and he said that's nowhere near he's thinking at the moment. I'm pretty sure he's thinking about it now and I'd yeah, love to know to, yeah. if he's going to go down with the team. There's no excitement at the top either because Sundowns long took that, but I wish that excitement for that second spot was as exciting as the league winners and the relegation. Steve Barker speaks about the great season they had. If you'd have told me at the beginning of the season you uh, would have been in every single semi-final that uh, the league offered and won a trophy and finished uh, third in the league, um, I would have probably not believed you. So yeah, regardless of, of whether we finish second or third, it will be a really fantastic season for us. And um, you know, I forgot to mention that we also basically played in every single match this season that has to offer except the final of the MTN and now the final of the Netbank. So by the time the league ends, we would have played 41 league matches. I mean, this, this would be a phenomenal stat if Sundowns hadn't gone and done what they've done this season. I mean, when they clocked 50 games, we all thought, gee was yeah. You know, so, you know, Barker, great season they've had. Still think they could play for that second position. 18-22, when we come back, Mazola Malefe and uh, the referee, Victor Tlungwane, says he's got a Sundowns, a Pirates, and a Chiefs moment. Yeah, Chose them himself. So, please. on the Mighty Metro FM. Let's get into the biggest stories in football this past weekend. And to do that, we've got the best journalist available for such. And it's uh, the man that breaks all the stories, but also just gives content (laughs) at Super Journal. Follow him on X. Uh, What you got? Yeah, uh, we recently broke a story. SABCSport.com. Go check it out. Tebo Homokwena at loggerheads with the club Mamelodi Sundowns Mm. over an extension of a contract. Uh, Need to give some clarity here. Debo still has two years at Mamelodi Sundowns. So there's no pressure from a Mamelodi Sundowns point of view to wrap this up now, you know, because the player is still contracted until 2026. But because of interest from the Gulf region, from North Africa and in Europe as well, uh, the club would rather tie him to a longer contract, just as they've done goalkeeper Ronan Williams up until 2028. Uh, there hasn't been, you know, there's been some su- some suggestions about extending that by a further two years or give him four and a half years or whatever the case may be, but he has not yet signed it, which means, you know, they're not seeing eye to eye perhaps on the figures or, you know, whether, because Sundowns have kind of made it clear that they are not a selling club. So it's a story that we have to watch closely over the next couple of oh, couple so of I, weeks. Oh, so I, I was under, I was under yeah, yeah, yeah. the impression that it's a now thing. But he's still got a contract till 2026. He, yeah, yeah. Because I reached out to the club uh, to ask for a comment before going live with the story. And the club said, made it clear to me that Tebo uh, Homokwena, you know, they, from their side, they are under no pressure. Because the, 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 the player is still contracted for another two years. It's an internal thing and they won't entertain it any further than the comment that they were giving me. Because a lot of people were saying, they must release him, he must go overseas on the back of that performance at the Africa Cup of Nations with Bafana Bafana. But yeah, that's 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 the story that the club is not under pressure. But uh, t- from Tebo's point of view, he needs to definitely... He wants to get it wrapped up, obviously, for his mind. Would to be Sundowns be it. willing to let him go if an offer came? In the same way they did Percy, in the same way they did um, uh, Mailula, in the same way they've done Kama, no, not Kama Billiard, rather, but uh, Keegan Dolly in the yeah. past, etc., etc. Bongani Zoom a week ago on. Look, Sundowns kind of always say that, and, and I mean, you can make of that what you want. Sundowns always say if a good offer comes along the way and, you know, all parties involved are happy, they'll let the player go. But the reality is, if you look at the track record of how difficult it was to get those players out, you can see that Sundowns are by no stretch of the imagination a selling club. Percy had to go AWOL. 
for Brighton to their offer to be accepted. I think it was around 50 million rands for, for that to be accepted. Um, Cassius, there was a back and forth. Even the coach came publicly to say, I tried to convince him to stay, but he wanted to go. So the deal ended up happening. So you, you've got that in the back of your mind and could be similarly to Debo Mukwena as well. And then let's move on to another story. Recently at the Kosafa Awards, uh, you know, Victor Gomez was honored and we had uh, the opportunity to ask him there about uh, VAR because that's what everybody's talking about. And this is what Victor had to say. We had a meeting recently and I know that it's uh, it's on the way now. Now we are progressing very fast. Well, now we're sitting for some budgetary costs in the next two weeks and uh, yeah, that's how far we are already. So we've, we've gotten quite far. We've been working it for the past year already. So yeah, it's not something that you just switch on and say, yes, we're going to do it. We need to go through the processes, go through the budgets and go through everything. So it's quite intense. I don't believe it. Yeah, I was about to say, your namesake is telling us it's imminent, but I... I, I don't believe it. it yeah. No, just progress. Yes, but it's not what... He, he's making it sound like it's a now thing. Yeah. You know, and, and the mere fact that Victor Gomes, with all due respect, says that, you know, they're looking at budgets that we were told a year ago, two years ago, of how expensive this thing is, mm. which means a year, two years ago, they'd already looked at the budget. Yeah, yeah, so you yeah. can't be looking at budgets now. No. They've been looking at budgets and, I, I, you know... I, it was a matter of who's going to pay for it. Yeah. It was another one. Is it the PSL? Is it SAFA? Is yeah. it a combination of both? So, Victor, they a very, you know, well-put statement that is going to get people at ease for a while and well done on that, but I don't believe it. <laughs> Let's move on uh, to a story that's more believable. Uh-uh. <laughs> and that's uh, that Mamelodi Sundowns ladies are going to play in the USA Women's Cup alongside Kobe uh, of uh, Japan as well as uh, Kansas City of the USA as well as Atletico Madrid of Spain. Jerry Chabalala had his reaction about that uh, historic feat that's going to happen in mid-August with the ladies' team traveling to the United States. When when I heard about it and I look at uh, I look at the teams that we are going to compete up against, you know, we've got team from Asia, we've got team from Europe, we've also got team from North America, and we are coming in as Africans. It's a good opportunity for us to go out there and, and test ourselves and see in terms of uh, how far we, in terms of football in club level, we've seen our national team but, uh, competing against those other uh, continents, and we've seen how they fare. That's an, it's an opportunity for us to go out there and showcase our talent and to also learn, you know, from from other diversity cultures. And then uh, second last story, uh, it's another contract-related story. Ronwen Williams of Mamelodi Sundowns as well. He has signed a new contract up until 2028, uh, but the 32-year-old also has been yearning to play abroad, especially on the back of his hero- heroics at the AFCON. Uh, but he doesn't leave too much room to going abroad. This is why. I'm happy at the club. I signed a new deal. You know, long may this continue the, the achievements, the success, and even the, the heartbreak because that builds us and that fuels us to go even harder the next season. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm happy at sundown and I'm looking forward to the Club World Cup. But if something comes and the club is happy, then so be it. And then the final story, Andile. Uh, Stelis, Coach Rulani Mukwena was hammered for saying this, saying they are fatigued, they are tired. Uh, he doesn't know how the players are doing it, but uh, his counterpart at Stelis is now also saying the reason that they've dropped points in the last two matches two games, yeah. is because of the, the depth in the squad. I asked him on Saturday whether he'd be looking to make changes and beef up the squad to you know, kind of keep up with the uh, fixture schedule that's going to come next season. This is what had, he had to say. You know, even without any injuries, uh, you know, we could sort of feel. So obviously we are mindful of that in a way. Um, you know, unfortunately during the season we lost one or two players through sort of uh, ill discipline. Um, and, you know, that stage of the season it's difficult to replace those type of players. So, you know, that sort of took our numbers uh, down a bit. And uh, the DDC team have also been, you know, really pushing to win the league. So some of our players have maybe been more involved with them than we had anticipated and hoped for. And it only gets worse for Stellenbosch because now you add continental football. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if, if yeah, if they continue and that's saying, <laughs> Listen, on the quit, VAR He even quit uh, social media, Rulani, he said. Quit which social media? He said he's not on X or any social media. Someone, I'm on Instagram. We say someone else runs it for him, but I can't Oh, say, that's I can also DM. I can Hey, Speaking on VAR, yeah. um, he doesn't speak a lot, uh, but when he does speak, I mean, it's a one person we'd all like to listen to, and that is um, uh, Dr. Irvin Koza, the chairman 
of the DSTV Premiership of the PSL. You spoke to SABC's uh, Victor Malefo and Ukozi FM. Yes. Speak on the VAR matter. Have a listen. If VAR, as I told you, two years ago, was getting the Italian corn. Safa became honest with you. Unfortunately, there was only two trained people. If you want to have any VAR, good to see who was there. It was a final in that bank. Who was there? Italian corn. So, I want to have a corn, our trade, our two. Out of the country doing FIFA duties. Those in the country. So, Tina were ready. The corner with the support here, yeah, you yeah, support for the moment. They wanted invested money. Would improve the quality of the game to avoid this mean if God have if VR, but no. They spend money to support us in achieving if we are if and more believable. Two years ago, not Yeah, that's more believable. Not the guy right? telling us or no, they're, they're busy with at budget. budget now. Uh, no. no. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> the big, uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break. When we come back, big decisions made over the weekend by the referees. And unfortunately, it's not good news either. You know, I said this last week, and I'm going to say it again. When we started this show and we structured it in this way, with Mazola coming in to do the news and Davik later on joining us, Mazola, to come and deliver. You know, he'd come every other week. The weeks would be like, you know, there's nothing really to talk about and you wouldn't come on the air. Off late... He needs more time than the two of us put together. <laughs> and but and, and unfortunately, That's guys... That's not a good thing. It's not a good thing, number mm-hmm. one. And number two, it's, it is impossible to do. So it, it is uh, the referees every single weekend. And also, you know, to the defense of the referees, it is the part-time referees whose full-time jobs is not to referee mm-hmm. that have been atrocious this season to the level in which Vic Naramotsekha Weekly Morana content has had the most content and a little bit too much. And seeing him here, as much as we have, as much as we enjoy him, is not a good thing. Mm-hmm. It's not a good thing. No, it's not. Right, let's start. Orlando Pirates, what do you have? Uh, we're starting with Pirates, Richards Bay. On the 47th minute, we saw a serious foul play uh, by Mabasa. Uh, what does the law says? It says a tackle or challenge that endangers the safety of an opponent uses excessive force or brutality must be sanctioned as serious foul play. Uh, this is what Mabasa did. He went in with start straight leg uh, equals to serious foul play. So the player should have been sent off. Uh, unfortunately, nothing came out, even a yellow. But that tackle was endangering the safety of an opponent and That's Mabasa bad. should have been sent off. Yeah. That was such a bad. You decision. won't look at I it saw, twice. Everybody called it uh, the minute he went with his tackle. Everybody called it, but the ref. The and ref the ref was he it. was he wasn't far. Yeah, he was right there. The four, you always tell us about how the fourth ref, um, uh, you know, can intervene, can add. He was right there. He yeah. wasn't too far. The third, the second official wasn't too far. Mm-hmm. How do three people miss a decision like that? That's when VAR comes in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but yeah, that is. The mm-hmm. meeting that happened, ah, 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 another ah, one is coming, ah, ah, so we'll wait and see. Ah, okay, <laughs> yeah, but that was that was that was bad. Yeah, that was bad. That was, that was really bad. Yeah, I even called it from home red card, red card. And when it was not coming, I'm like, huh, what happened? Hey, and okay. then, everybody called yeah. the next game. Uh, next one is a uh, Chiefs Tears Galaxy. We saw a uh, tough Ed Milson uh, getting a second yellow and receiving a red card. Mm. Um, that red card to me. Uh, it was supposed to be straight red card immediately because the way he went in with the lunge with straight leg, uh, maybe the referee gave him a yellow uh, because of point of contact. But the way he, he, he went with that tackle, it was more serious foul play. But he did receive his second yellow and he was sent off. Now, let's tap in into the NSL rules. Remember against Shalos, the same Dove uh, Ed Milson got a red card this season. Mm. Now he's getting another red card in the same season what does the nsl rule says the nsl rule says uh, if you get a red card you'll stay for two games or you'll mm. be suspended for the next two games if you get another red card in the same season mm. uh, w- they are going to add another match so from the two, the two then becomes three it becomes three so mm. when he got that red card uh, chiefs were left with three games so they played one he was not there they're going to play another one. He won't be there. They're going to play the last game. He won't be there. So his season is over. So he might as well uh, be given Bobby, give him a leave to go to Mozambique and rest <laughs> because he will <laughs> take no further part in the league. Uh, his season is Disciplinary over. Disciplinary record, yeah. Exactly. So uh, what I wanted to educate of you as our listeners is uh, if you get the f- first red card, it's two-game suspension. If you get the second red card in the same season, it's three. If you get another red card in the same season, it's four. So it goes on like that just to uh, enforce discipline with the league. And then the last one, um, uh, 
it's Sundown's uh, Arrows, where we saw... Is this the Ronan Williams? Yeah. Ronan Williams, Williams. Yeah. Okay, let me, let me tell you, like, you know, let, let me speak on behalf of all of those that asked. Yeah. Okay? So the argument here is, was he the last man? Because you saw, Mudao was Closing c- close the on the right, uh-huh. and he was attending to goal side, uh-huh. right? Yeah. Ronan Williams comes in at a point where the ball then goes left, away from goal. Uh-huh. So with that consideration, is yellow the right card? Let's go to the law. Uh, when we go to law, it says the following must be considered for Doxo. The distance between the offense and the goal. It was going towards goal. Uh, the general direction of the play. Mm. As you say, Ma, uh, the ball was moving sideways. Mm. It was not going straight. Mortal, so yeah. we cannot give it a tick there. And then likelihood of the player gaining control of the ball was there. And then location and number of defenders, as you said, Mudao uh, was covering. Ca- was covering. Mm. So now, uh, for you to give but a red card... But it was behind, card, mind you. Yes. But for you to give a red card, all these four considerations must be 100% completed. If not. you are in doubt... Mm then you reduce to yellow. So the referee there uh, was in doubt in terms of gen- general direction of play. Hence, he gave a yellow. That was correct decision by the referee to give a yellow because that was not doxo because of the one consideration that was uh, put down. At least they got something right this week. So that was supposed to be yellow. It, it was given as a yellow, which was correct decision. But, but he was the last man, David. No, no, no. Not quite. Remember the four considerations. It was, no, it was definitely the last man. Well, that was behind. But not not the, quite. The, according general, to, the to, general direction yeah. of play is the one that reduces the dogs up because it didn't go straight to goals. It was more to, headed towards the corner flag exactly, more than Which anything. will make it obvious. So it's no longer obvious mm. because the law says obvious goal scoring opportunity. So if it goes towards the corner, it's, it's no longer obvious. Then obvious, you reduce yeah. to yellow. That is yeah. law. That is yeah. law. Yeah. Yes. yes. I agree with all the. Four. I really agree with the Vic, but I <laughs> no, agree no, no, with I, him. I, I, like I, I don't disagree or agree with you, Davika. I, I listen to you as the lawmaker here. Yeah, I'm yeah. just questioning to make sure that we cover all our posts here to say. So because he was going away, Muda, so the Mudao factor doesn't even count at this point. Remember this number and location of defenders. So if it goes away, then it gives Mudao a chance to cover. So that reduces the uh, the doxo situation. So we can't give a red card under that circumstances unless all four are completely successful, then you can give a red card. Hmm. Wow, it's 1840, just in time. I want to take as many calls as possible. Uh, Mazola, let's get some premonitions before we take a break, because when we take a break, I want to come back with your voice notes as well as your calls. Your voice notes on 60 You can ask Mazola, you can ask uh, uh, the principal, and also just questions on the league. Uh, let's cover a little bit of Premier League. Huh? Uh, Man United, oh man. Hey, how many times are you going to break my heart? Man City went tomorrow, yeah? Man City tomorrow. Arsenal have been fantastic this season. Mm-hmm. I must tell you, I just don't think Man City is going to drop any points. So therefore, yeah. they'll lose it. But they've so been fantastic this season. And then, Kaiser Chiefs. It is possible for Kaiser Chiefs to drop even below 10th, depending on the last game. Even. The next game, if Kaiser Chiefs don't win the game, remember, if you look at the points... They can still drop a lot further than what they are. They're sitting at eighth at the moment. You've been busy on the calculator. I've been, yeah, I've been calculating. They can <laughs> still drop. And of course, you've got to watch Kaiser Chiefs. That's the biggest team in the land. You've got to watch where Kaiser Chiefs are. Um, it's gonna be, do you want another top eight without Kaiser Chiefs? But then again, who doesn't deserve to be in the top eight? Mm. You know, it's, it's, season, it's the season that was, wasn't it? So those are the things that you can uh, uh, have a chat at us about. The Mokwena saga, not as dire as, as, as it seems, but if there are offers to come, we know in the past how that's gone mm-hmm. is what makes this the issue that it is. Absolutely. Let's take a break. <laughs> it's time for you and your interaction. Let's start with Tando M1805 on X, Davik. But the tackle itself, never mind anything else, never mind penalty, uh, sorry, never mind Doxo, but just the tackle itself that Ronwin uh, made, is that not worthy of a red card? Just that tackle? No, 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 no. Uh, normally we give a red when they starts. So, and starts going straight into the man. If you look at Neo Mayema starts, you look at Mabasa starts, that equals to endangering the safety of an opponent. So, their, their red card should come out. But this one, it did not endanger the safety of an opponent. It might look bad, but uh, uh, in terms of endangering the safety of an opponent, then we reduce it to yellow, which was correct decision by the referee. All right, so there you go. 
Uh, that answers your question there. Is there another one? Uh, FIFA WC participant says, Thank you, Super General Angelé. I told people that yellow card from the ref was a correct decision here. What's well, not me, Mr. Vic? Uh, Mr. Vic will cover the two serious fouls on both Mkulisa and Mbule against Royal AM. Did you see those? <laughs> I don't remember those ones. Oh, against Mbule. I remember the against Mbule one. Okay. Oh, the Actually, game on Saturday. The game on Saturday. I remember the tackle against Mbule. Uh, it was a bad one. But uh, Cedric, that's why I always say, you know, and I say this early every Monday, and I say hashtag ask the principal so that it gives him enough time. I mean, there were between the last time he was here and now, there's 20 games that have been played. Mm-hmm. There's no way he can have all 20 moments. Mm-hmm. So it's better if you tell us a little bit early. I let him know, then he can go find those moments. Let's hear your voice notes. Hey, ma'a, who's it, who's it, ma'a? Ripeli, ripeli, le my ref. And ah, uh, mazola man, mazola gas pis kupanya na man praman. Who do you think the next coach, or who are they speaking to, next chief's coach, man? We're, we're anxious, bro. We're anxious, wants to know. We're tired of the suffering. Eighty dama chance. The next coach of Kaiser Chiefs. Well, what is the latest on that? I know Chiefs have been keeping a very tight lid on this. Uh, the last coach we had here was um, uh, what's his name? Not Nabi. No, 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 no. No, the former, the former um, Black Leopards man, uh, guy was in Tanzania. Luke, Luke Emile yeah, yeah, was yeah. the last coach to come on here and say they He's did have conversations that with him, but it ended nowhere. That was the last time. Have yeah. we heard anything else? I haven't heard anything else apart from obviously other, you know, uh, media reports linking former Egyptian uh, coach Rui Vitiora. Uh, who coached Egypt at the AFCON as well as um, I think his name is Raul Caneda. Uh, as, as, you know, some have even linked Miguel Gamondi to the Chief Jose. Obviously, he's just won the league with the Yeah, no, I, I, I said it here when, when, when they played Sundowns in that first league. I said, that's the best coach for Chiefs, I think. Yeah. You know, somebody who knows South Africa has played, um, I mean, has coached two teams in South Africa, has mm. coached continental football, mm. has taken a team at the pressure level of where Kaiser Chiefs is in Tanzania. And if you've ever been to Tanzania and watched a game there, you'll know that our fans are nothing compared, compared to what to happens you. in those stadiums. Yeah, yeah. I think Mr. Gamondi, alongside with his star player, yeah. those would be... Aziz Key. Aziz Key, those would be Chiefs' best signings, I think. Yeah. The, the one thing I'm sure of is, is that they're definitely inundated with, with CVs, that's for sure. I mean, I think a lot of coaches would want that 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 Kaiser Chiefs job. It's a plum job uh, in rich history. You know, if you if you get the right balance, a good squad, a good manager, obviously a lot of a lot of things can be done out at Naturena. But as far as I know, no no conclusion with regards to who takes over as the new coach at, at Chiefs. All right, so let's play the voice notes. Evening the three wise men. Hey. Uh, Mr I'm not a DJ. Hey, all oh, the time. Uh, if Arsenal <laughs> loses this this league this time yeah it's not because we we arsenal arsenal no it's because okay. man, man it wasn't meant to be awesome hey, cool. i mean whether you feel like them or not perennial losers bridesmaids whatever They've been great this season, not only in results, but in the way they play. Um, I'm impre- The one thing that's impressed me the most is how Ateta has gotten uh, Kai Havertz to play the way <laughs> he's been playing. I watched Kai Havertz for, what, two, three seasons at Chelsea? I've never seen that Kai Havertz. So kudos to, to, to Mikel Ateta for you know bringing the best out of him. But I still think City will win the league. Hey, good evening, gents. Hey. I want to ask here. Mm. What's happening between Paris and the Sterling? Because he's not playing, but we saw him playing the derby and he's got a brace. After that, he won Yamalala and Java. And now as in born, it's like by a user. By a user for Ama games like Ama cool. Hmm. Then and then drop him after. When Zala, dig deep buffets. <laughs> that's a that's that's a good ah. one because especially if you look at the transition from last season to this season. Yeah. Um Saleng, one of the best players in the league. True. Um accoladed for what he did last season, Bafana Bafana to this season where he barely featured. I mean the one thing that uh, coach Jose Ribeiro did say at the start of the year when he was asked about uh, Saleng, I think it was after he scored two goals in the derby. He said there's a lot of things obviously that happen behind the scenes uh, that we we don't see but the coaches see. 
and Saleng didn't have a good start at all in terms of his preseason. Uh, that's the reason why he didn't he wasn't playing regularly and ended up missing on the Afcon unfortunately. Uh, and then he came back a little bit stronger second half of the season as we saw two goals in the Soweto derby. But beyond that, you know, he has I, not been able to yeah. cement that eleven, yeah. even and with Lodge gone. Yeah, and only the coach honestly can answer that question. I, I don't know since that because the only comment the coach gave us was that Saling's pre-season and early early season onset wasn't as good as perhaps the pre the previous season when he was uh, neck neck and neck with Debo for Football of the Year. Um, uh, uh, I just want to ask who the principal about the goal Amazulu against Kaiser Chiefs, the equalizing goal. I mean, if you look at the line, is it offside or was it not offside? Simple question. Over to you, the principal. Thank you so much, Ma. Wonderful sure, show. Sure. Yeah, um, so you want to go soccer zone, then and, and, and it's simply because line. we have to draw the, the line. line. Yeah. yeah, it must be visual for you. We must draw the line so you can see what Davik is saying. So he likes to take the offsides ones to soccer zone, yes, but and definitely is there. So, white soccer zone will draw the line for you because if we answer yes or no without drawing the line, uh, we feel it, we are we, it's not fair. Okay, so, yeah, good evening, Ma'a. Hey, hashtag ask Mazol. Yo, Mazuel, super chain. Mm. Yo, yo, yo. Maybe can we, is it possible for us in this country to experience what they, ex, they, what they are experiencing overseas in the Barclays Premier League, taking it down to the wire? I mean, I support <laughs> my melody sundowns, but, you know, being a bully, like the way I have been for seven consecutive years, it's it's, it's, it's it's exhausting, man. As much as I am celebrating, but I need competition, man. This is Vuyo Simao Ekailija. Vuyo is asking that question because I sent out a tweet uh, yesterday after seeing um, the Arsenal Manchester United result. And I said, when are we going to experience a DSTV Premiership title race that goes down to the wire? And it's been a while. I didn't know it was going to go viral like this. I think it's sitting on, what, 266 comments. And so, I mean, I... Trendsetter, I, look at you. So, I don't know. I don't I don't know. The answer I don't, is... I don't think any time soon. Yeah, not any time soon. I don't think any time soon. One last one, then we take a call. Donald Bonko, Sikira Peti, Kabelo and Peter. I see you. One last one. Hi, Ma'a. Pindia. The weekend that was... Sure, Arsenal is leaving it to the last minute. It's so interesting. Like, it's, I don't know, it's Joe dropping. It's all the excitement. But obviously, we have the faith and we keep the fingers crossed. As and now we go. Here we go. Good luck. Aha. Uh-huh. You know, when your parents have a shout, you're applying for tears. <laughs> You're applying for tears. <laughs> Donald is out in Bryanston wants to speak about Doxo. Team is not dog, so it's Doxo, man. Hey, <laughs> so. Dog so. Go for it, uh, Donald. I'm good, Andy. Tavik is here. Tavik, I'm for education, man. I just want to analyze something about um, whereby a goalkeeper last name uh, becomes a keeper offside i don't know if you you can follow so i think there was this offside whereby the last defense was now a goalkeeper playing a public goalkeeper and take it now to in the one era um msimango msimango uh, there was a keeper when he fouled the player and on this one williams never fouled there was no keeper hmm, so, that's a good question donald so now that's where I get surprised because it, it was the last present. So now the, empty, the, the, the net was empty on the other one. There was still a keeper who can save, who can save the, the ball. So I see big it up. What, what are you saying, Tariq? Denying of an obvious goal-scoring opportunity, right? Yeah. Yeah. Normally yeah. that speaks to there's a keeper and the mm. player. Mm. And then the defender yeah. comes and wipes out the player mm. when it was just one-on-one. Mm. Ronwin mm. Williams didn't have cover. Mm. It was an come. empty net. Team, it's, Does it's that here. change anything? Yeah, mm. uh, it's two ways. Um, mm. It's denying a goal or a goal-scoring opportunity. Mm. So mm. what you are doing, the other one relate to a goal. Mm. So if you deny a goal, you'll still be sent off. But if you deny a goal-scoring opportunity, 
you will still be sent off uh, unless a penalty is awarded where the player was challenging for the ball, where you'll get a yellow. But if it's outside the penalty area and you deny a goal, red card, you deny a goal scoring opportunity, you will still be sent off. So they go both of them. But Tafik, so, what he's saying so is. So you still feel which is not a red card? Ronald Williams didn't have cover. It was, there was, there no, was nothing. Was after the keep. So that on its own, yeah. shouldn't that have made matter for something? Remember, in all the circumstances, you still go back to the consideration to say uh, D, Yeah, D, but if D, there's C. no goalkeeper, I can there's score no from goalkeeper. anywhere, from the corner flag even. Look, it, it's going away from goal. Now it's no longer obvious. It's obvious. There's no keeper. It's, it's ah, obvious. <laughs> but Misa can <laughs> that, That's what Donald is. Donald, am I incorrect it's, in understanding you? It's also not obvious. The keeper can save the ball. The keeper can save the goal. No, it, it, go, it goes to opportunity, that one. So the keeper can save it, but an opportunity was created. So the one for goal, it's, uh, it's, it's now the general direction of play is the one that says we're not sure. Send you reduce. Donald, I hope you got yours. Thank you so much. Let's go to Mungosi. Shop, shop. Mungosi is out in Dobsonville. Wants to speak to you, Davik. Uh, you're yeah, very popular here. Go for it, uh, Mungosi. Yeah, Mr. Anima, I know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So and, and did you owe me? You remember last week what I told you? What did you I say? Said, uh, about, about this incident of Rowan Williams. You remember when I was talking about, I was speaking about the limited match? And then uh, you asked me, it was Williams. Deserve the red card or a yellow card, and they say it's a yellow card. You did say that. You said it's a yellow card. Well, you've been proven right. The referee agrees with you. We don't. We, we don't listen to. We don't just listen to. <laughs> listen to things, uh, I just want to let you know about those things. So you just called to tell me I must listen to you. <laughs> exactly. If, if, if you were saying, if you were saying it was not there, just listen. To, just, just call me. There we go. Of course, you have to I appreciate it. He's our new referee. He's on the bench for it. Uh, Kira Peti is in Mabupane. Kira. Beginning of the season, or the awards, the awards, the chairman said if the club wins the league three times in a row, by I still remember even even him clapping hands or something saying well done, well done, well done. Then for another star of it. Yes, yeah, I remember you even spoke about it on the show here. But I, I yeah. don't have I don't I don't have answers to that unfortunately. But it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened, yeah. So I don't know what the and this is the fourteenth star yeah. in PSL year. I mean sorry, win of the league in mm. PSL year for mm. Sundowns. Mm. So the star is supposed to come out after ten wins, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll keep I'll we'll, tell you what, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna escalate this one and uh we'll, we'll, we'll ask your question more, for yeah. you. No, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Shop I appreciate you. it. I actually yeah. forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Peter, Peter's and Brits, Peter. Hey man, Abira. go for it. Go for it, Peter. Yeah, uh, uh, I want to ask Mazola mm. about uh, Mukwena. Sure. So my question is, uh, Mukwena, how many games did he play this season, and then is he injured or not now? He's ca- so the latest from uh, Coach Rulani Mukwena is that he could have played him in the last few games, but because of the cup final now being you know, uh, a, a game of consequence, as the coach would put it. He would rather save Debo for that. If they had not maybe progressed to the final, he could have risked him. But it's a matter of managing uh, his injury at the moment. I, I think he's obviously back in training and should be available for the final against um, Orlando Pirates. Are you checking the As far as the games? games are concerned, in the league, I know he's played 15 games. Yeah. So only 15 games in the league, which is why I was I was alarmed and shocked at, uh, at how... You know, he's one of the favorites for yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the best player this season. But he's played 15, scored three goals and had two assists with three yellow cards in the league. But then you've got to go back to the nine appearances in the Champions League. You've got the four appearances in the MTN. You've got one appearance in the okay. Net Bank. And then you've also got five appearances in the African Football League. All right, but because uh, now that, uh, if you look at uh, Sundowns, the only they are doing things. They, they, they don't just let player go easy from the next team. So I'm just wondering what will be the problem that Man Lodi Sanders because if someone is not happy, he just let that person uh, go. I and mean, that was... Uh, well, we don't going. know if he's not happy. I'll tell you what, when I, when I, Peter, we'll let this one fold out because, you know, he's still got a two-year contract and yeah. there's no solid offer that has come yeah. as far as I know. So let there yeah. be an offer and then I think then we'll know then, whether then we'll know, he needs yeah, to go or not. Yeah. The story yeah. forward. Thank you so much. It's Thanks, Peter. Peter. Last one. Uh, I saved it for last, as per usual. It's Cabello GP. He wants <laughs> to speak about his beloved Chiefs. 
No, I'm good, my boy. How are you? I'm good. I want to greet everybody, all the gentlemen for the for 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 for, for the studio. I want to greet them now. Sure, Gabby. Yeah, good evening, Oga. Yes, sir. Not to try to complain because last time I think it's three weeks ago I did a video. I was sending the video to management, case I choose manager. I was asking them because all these people they are scoring us two zero, three zero, two two, three three. Is it not possible that at least if they can put three goalkeepers, let them put Kune this side, let them put Peterson and 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 Bafum. At least we can we can manage uh, one, at least one point. If you can look now, we are we are position eight. Tolokwani is position nine. All of us are 35, 35. We are going to play them. These people, they, they win us. We are out of stop eight. Mm. So better ask if we can, if you can look at, uh, after Tolokwani, I think it's cheaper. Cheaper, I think they have 33 or 34. So we, they are closer to us. So I think the best way, let us confuse these people because they know our party line up. I think, Coach, if Kate is listening, let him put Peter Faith and Kune as the striker and put the rest of the people at the back line so that we can confuse the whole team. Because now they know Saini is coming. Let them put Saini as left back and they take the goalkeepers and put them at the striker. That is what I'm thinking we will, we will work. Oh, God, Ma- Peter Zen is suspended. He's got a red card. No, Mazala will pass your message. It is duty, Una Kabel. It is duty to pass that message as you said it. Gabelo GP out in Pretoria. <laughs> he will be personally typing it and taking it through, guys. Appreciate it, Tafik. I'll see you on Soccer Zone. This one is still on the bench. Uh, he's on two yellows. Pella, Pella, Sui Eri. Sui Eri. 1859 <laughs> on the Mighty Metro FM. And thank you for being part of the show. My name is Andy Lengwebe. Pella, Pella. And so, me.